So, in my last lecture, I discussed some design aspects of a typical distribution substations, uh, different bus bar schemes and uh, the typical uh, design aspect of radial distribution network, design in the sense how this radial distribution network is usually designed and uh, it works. Okay. And I also discuss uh, something about uh, sectionalizing switch and tie line. Okay. So, in this particular lecture, I will start uh, some analyzing uh, aspect or some basic analysis of a typical radial distribution uh, feeder. Okay. So, let us start. So, before I start this uh, some analytical aspect of radial distribution network, I will talk about three important aspect while designing a uh, distribution network as a whole. There are three important decisions uh, involved in designing this radial distribution network as a whole. Okay. So, these three decisions uh, are one is uh, decisions on primary feeder routing, one is decision on number of feeders another is decision of conductor sizes. So, these three are important decisions that one distribution network planner uh, should take or uh, should decide uh, based upon certain aspect. Now, what are the uh, parameters which will directly influence these decisions? Those things I will just mention and in uh, next few uh, lectures, you will be able to understand that why they are so important, uh, this they are so important and whenever I will talk about the different models, different planning models of power distribution system, those decisions are very much crucial and those decisions sometimes are formulated as the decision variable of an optimization problem and the uh, optimal value of those decisions uh, is determined through an optimization process. So, but uh, this we will not be going to discuss right now, we will be discussing this whenever we will discuss on uh, power distribution planning models. Okay. At this point of time, one should understand that what do you mean by feeder routing and of course, number of feeders uh, one can understand it nothing but how many feeders we should have and that uh, also the decision on uh, this conductor sizes. These three important decision apart from that there is another decision in involves uh, one is uh, that is basically the location of the substation. Now, in order to understand that what is feeder routing, let us consider that we have a service area. This one is basically the service area under a typical substation, service area under a substation. Okay. Now, you can assume that uh, whenever uh, this IIT campus was in the developing phase to build, of course, this, this area was the area under the uh, this campus okay. and we have different load loading points at which are scattered all over this service area which might be somewhere here, which might be somewhere here, which might be here, here and here. So, these are loading points or load demand points or wherever the customers need this power supply. So, this black these dots they are basically representing load demand point, point or alternatively you can write as load node. Now, we design a distribution network basically in order to provide this supply power supply to those uh, load points. Okay. Now, here the first decision that 
one uh, distribution planner needs to take is that first decision is substation substation location and rating this uh, is typically the first decision that where should I place uh, the substation and what should be the rating. Of course, substation rating depends upon how many power transformers uh, are there. Okay. So, and what are the ratings of those power transformers. So, if we have uh, let us say uh, 2 10 MVA transformers. So, obviously, the substation rating will be 2 multiplied by this 10 MVA that is 20 MVA. Okay. So, this rating depends upon number of power transformer, number of power transformer and their rating. Okay. And substation location is another decision which is not mentioned over here, but it is an important decision that where should I place the substation? Should I place the substation at the center of this uh, service area or should I place somewhere in at the periphery of the service area or where I should place somewhere here or where. So, substation locations uh, is itself a uh, important decision for planning of power distribution network. Okay. And in many of the planning models, I will show you uh, this decision is determined through an optimization approach. Uh, so, that uh, the, the location of the substation uh, is optimal, okay. but there are many other factors like sometimes uh, even though if, if you uh, geometrically analyze and find a location as an optimal location, but that location um, uh, may not be a feasible location, because uh, there are many factors that you one need to consider before uh, selecting or before choosing the site for the substation. Okay. Now, uh, this I will discuss uh, uh, in whenever uh, in one of the modules, whenever I will talk about different, different planning models. Now, at present, let us consider that at the center, I will place the substation, which is uh, the optimal location and it is also feasible to place there. Okay. Why I am talking about the feasibility of placing a substation? Because sometimes, if you find a location as the uh, optimal location for the substation, but in that location, if we have uh, some hospital, some school or some uh, uh, this uh, you know uh, garden or park. So, you may not be able to place a substation there. So, substation that is why many of the distribution network planners uh, they, they exclude this decision as the one of the decision which is to be obtained through uh, some planning or optimization approach. So, they uh, um, with their experience they can find out this location uh, which is the feasible location and accordingly they will uh, construct the network. Okay. But again coming back to the main question that where should we uh, means what is primary feeder routing. Okay. Now, these are the typical node or load demand points which already I mentioned. Now, the question is how I will uh, design this distribution network, should I design a feeder such that they will feed this node first or then they will uh, one another lateral will feed these nodes or vice versa. So, how do how do we construct, how do we construct this network uh, based upon that uh, this feeder routing will vary or feeder routes will vary. For example, suppose this is uh, a typical uh, node number let us say 15 and this is node number 16. So, uh, I already have some feeder here. Now, uh, should we consider this both the nodes in a same lateral or should we create two lateral feeder 
to connect these two nodes. So, those decisions will come under this feeder routing okay? or this basically determine that roots of the feeder, geographical roots of the feeder and this depends upon many factors. These are the factors which uh, directly influence of the, the determination of the roots of the feeder. One is load density, another is physical barrier. Sometimes uh, you will see that uh, there is a water body uh, in between two dim node points. So, even though they are closer, we cannot construct a particular distribution line, overhead line uh, and uh, this is this this is one kind of uh, barrier that one need to consider. Then also this voltage drop as I was talking about in one of my lectures, this voltage drop is an important measure that uh, particularly designing this distribution network, uh, because that uh, every hire we should have some rule that that much of voltage drop would be allowable, let us say 10 percent voltage drop would be allowable. So, that means, the part the customer which is located farthest point of the network he should not experience more than 10 percent of the drop of voltage. So, that one should understand. So, this voltage drop is another important measure and that is why uh, we will use some analytical approach to determine this uh, expression for voltage drop for different types of distribution network or distribution feeder. In next uh, few slides, I will explain this. Then of course, future load growth, number of feeders and also this cost, because this is the ultimate you know factor, which is somewhat related to the economy of the system. So, we can design something, but that should be economically feasible. If it is not economically feasible, nobody will take the design that you are providing to that. Okay. So, feeder routing is nothing but to decide how you will choose the roots of the feeder. So, do we choose the root of the feeder from one point to another or they should be chosen as a lateral feeders or what. So, this decision is an important decision. Okay. Then next we will go for uh, an another decision which is called number of feeders that how many uh, typical feeders one should have under a particular substation. So, if we go back to the previous slide and let us see that I can choose uh, typically four feeders to connect this all these nodes for, for this particular service area or I should connect them by using two feeders or even I can consider that I should go for three feeders. So, that number that how many feeders I should use to supply all the loading points or all the load nodes that is also another important decision. And there are some factors which will influence this decision. These are load density, feeder length. Feeder length is of course, another factor because uh, too much lengthy feeder uh, will of course, create um, excessive voltage drop along with uh, it will be difficult for the person who are in charge of maintenance to look after them. So, that is why this feeder length is another important factor. So, feeder limitations, primary voltage level, substation capacity, uh, conductor size, voltage drop is again it is the most important you know factor for the such kind of decisions that how many feeders we should have, what should be the roots of the feeder, all these things will be limited by this voltage drop and also we should take care about this future load growth. Then another important decision is choice of the conductor size. Okay. Now, usually we have uh, a set of conductors, usually we have a set of conductors, set of conductors from which we should uh, select uh, a particular size for a particular feeder route. For example, that uh, in between this few, uh, you know 15 and 16, this, uh, this main feeder what type of conductor should I use, what should be the size of the conductor, this is an important decision and that size would be of course, different uh, than the size of the conductor that we will 
used to create the laterals. Okay. So, for uh, designing the main feeder, a set of conductors would be used for a particular sizes and for uh, designing the lateral, a set another set of conductors will be used. And uh, which particular conductor we will use from that set, this is the important decision. Okay. So, out of this set of this conductor, we should select, select the most appropriate conductor, appropriate size of the conductor. Now, again which one we will uh, consider as most appropriate size? This decision may come through an optimization process later on I will show you. Of course, the economy is one of the factors. If I go for higher size of the conductor, then its cost will be also higher. So, we should judicially select that what should be the conductor size at a specific root of a feeder. So, this basically uh, depends upon different factors. Again, you see voltage drop uh, factor is a common to all these decisions, because this uh, is an important factor, which influence this length of the feeder, which influence that number of the feeders, feeders root as well as what type of conductor we will use. Because voltage drop means uh, it is basically I z drop. Okay. And I is you know this load current and Z is the impedance of the feeder and uh, this Z is again de uh, dependent upon the conductor specification and the conductor spacing. Okay. And uh, I depends upon this how many loads you are connecting and how uh, you are connecting these loads. Okay. So, those things I will discuss in detail whenever I will talk about this power distribution system planning. Okay. So, this is an important factor. Apart from that, we have many other factors like load focus, load growth rate, power losses, because you know depending upon the conductor size, power losses will vary, because power losses means it is I square R loss. So, I depends upon loading and R depends upon conductor size. So, of course, this, uh, uh, this power loss is another criteria that uh, distribution system operator or owner should try to keep it under a specified value, uh, otherwise it will hamper their economy, it will, uh, it will be that loss for this particular distribution network owner. So, they should try to uh, minimize it as much as possible. So, uh, this depends upon this uh, load by uh, you know suitably selecting the loading of the line and this also depends upon by suitable choice of the conductor size. So, this I square R I am talking about this is line losses, distribution line losses and this distribution line losses as a whole is summation of I square R of all these feeder branches. Okay. So, this I will come later on. Then cost is the most uh, you know important factor, because uh, economy depends upon the cost and tra so transformer rating and conductor ratings are important. Now, I will go to some analytical approach to determine uh, these two important factors, two important factors of a typical distribution feeder one is power loss, another is uh, voltage drop. Okay. These are also the limiting factors, these are also the limiting factors through which one should decide that how much uh, loading we should allow in a particular feeder or how many numbers of feeders should we use and should we go for this capacity additions of the uh, substation and all. Okay, so, these are the two important limiting factors. Okay. So, these are um, this whatever I will talk about today, these are some typical analysis uh, analytical approach to find out this mathematical expressions for power loss and voltage drop. Okay. But these are under certain conditions. Okay. First of all, for this uh, case, 
we will consider that this is the service area. So, this is the this dotted line is the service area, this dotted line is the service area under this substation or under this distribution feather. So, this one is service area under the distribution feeder and this distribution feeder is of a uniformly distributed load. Uh, this distribution uh, feeder is having a uniformly distributed load and its service area is a rectangular area having this length of the feeder is L having this length of the feeder is L, L meter or L kilometer whatever or L mile whatever you can consider. Okay. And this is the main feeder you know, this is the main feeder, this is you know that uh, circuit breaker of the feeder. Okay. And this is basically distribution uh, system LV bus that 11 kb bus for example, in India. Okay. And these are the lateral feeders. So, these all are lateral feeders, these all are lateral feeders. And these black dots they are representing this load node. Load nodes. Okay. They are basically uh, you can consider an aggregated uh, load demand uh, and it is connected to a distribution transformer and that distribution transformer basically uh, converts this distribution voltage level to the utilization voltage level and directly feed it feed to the customer. Okay. All right. So, this is uh, typical type of distribution feeder which is uh, having a rectangular service area typical a particular uh, feeder I am talking about. Uh, this is the main feeder or trunk feeder and these are the lateral feeders and each of the black dots they are representing this uh, you know load nodes and we assume that it uh, this loads are of uniformly distributed. Okay. So, this uh, you know analytical approach works under this condition other, other than that it will not work. So, we assume that loads are of uniformly distributed uh, service area is of rectangular and uh, you know we have a one main feeder and few lateral feeders each feeder each uh, you know lateral feeder they are connected to it some node uh, you know load nodes. Okay. So, you can understand since load is of uniformly distributed along the main feeder and also in the lateral feeder this load current in the main main feeder will be function of the distance. And we consider that length of the feeder is L, L meter or L kilometer or L not L meter it should be either or L kilometer or L mile. Okay. Now, in order to anal in order to determine this power loss and this voltage drop for typical that feeder which is having uniformly distributed load and rectangular service area what we will do we will consider uh, a, a typical single line diagram of this feeder this gives you the single line diagram uh, this is the total length this l is the total length and this x is basically uh, providing a, you the variable length. So, x is 0 at uh, near to the substation, near substation and x is basically L at the farthest point, point of the main feeder. Okay. So, L is uh, x is equal to L at the farthest point. So, the remotest customer uh, who, who is located at the end of this feeder uh, at this point x would be equal to L. Okay. And we take a, uh, at a distance 
x, we take a small elementary length of d x, although in figure it is not showing that small, but it can you can assume d x is infinitely small uh, length. Okay. And you all know that we represent the impedance of a typical distribution line line by ohm part length. That means, if your length is represented in kilometer, we typically say that this feeder resistance uh, feeder impedance is let us say 1 ohm per kilometer, a typical value I am talking about, maybe 0.5 ohm per kilometer. So, we represent this feeder impedance based upon the conductor size, uh, which type of conductors we are using to construct that feeder and this feeder impedance is represented by impedance uh, in ohm per unit length. Okay. So, since the uh, length of the infinitely small section is d x, so uh, therefore, and if we have this impedance of this per unit length for this feeder is z ohm per kilometer or per meter whatever you can say. So, then for this infinitely small section, its impedance net impedance will be z multiplied by d x z multiplied by d x. So, that much ohm would be the impedance of this infinitely small line section. Okay. Now, again, so do not consider this whole uh, thing like a lumped feeder or lumped uh, line uh, transmission line, which usually power system uh, um, uh, engineers have to analyze. Uh, because this each and every node, each and every point of this particular feeder, we have some load demand. We have some load demand like this for each and every point of this feeder. Okay. Now, therefore, we assume that the current near to the substation at x is equal to 0 is I s that is the sending node current. So, this I s is basically representing the current at x is equal to 0. Okay. And this beyond this point, beyond this the remotest customer, uh, this current would be of course, 0, because current will be drawn by this remotest customer. Therefore, no current will flow through beyond that. So, this I r is basically representing the current, current of the feeder at x is equal to L x is equal to L. And as you know this all this this uh, you know current itself is varying uh, throughout this length starting from this substation current to this remotest point current. Okay. And this of course, this current which is flowing through the substation on uh, at x, x is equal to 0 that will be having the highest magnitude because it will basically carry uh, carrying the load of all this load whoever connected to that particular feeder and uh, this other uh, side that at x is equal to L current would be automatically 0. Okay. And uh, we are assuming that current drawn by this elementary uh, by this infinitely small section is d i. Okay. So, we have three uh, components of current, uh, who one is current entering this to this infinitely small section which is I x 1, another is current which is leaving this infinitely small section that is I x 2, another is current which is drawn by this infinitely small section that is d i. So, we have some load at this uh, you know infinitely small section who is drawing that d i amount of current. Now, what we can do? So, this whatever I discuss and you also know that this current these are basically uh, tie you know it is varying with the length. So, this current is basically uh, I x is function of x. Okay. So, this current is or I should say that load current uh, is function of 
sorry. Function of length. Okay, so as we know, so I is uh, varying with this uh, current, and since we have uniformly distributed load, we uh, this uh, rate of change of this current of this uh, over this section is a constant that is k. This small k is representing a constant because we have uniformly distributed load. Now, we apply k c l, we apply k c l at this two point one is point one and point two. So, point one is basically you know point one is the starting point of this start point of this infinitely small section and point two is the end point and the you know distance between point 1 and point 2 is dx okay so if we apply kcl at these two nodes kcl so i will get two equations or i simply apply this kcl at this point in order to have a expression of uh, in order to have a relationship of ix1 di and ix2 which is like this so, i x 1 will be equal to d i plus i x 2 because you know i x 1 will be higher because it is nearest uh, to the substation and i x 2 will be of course, lower because it is uh, distant away from the substation as compared to i uh, point 1. Okay. And as you know that it is a radial feeder, so power flow will be gradually reducing if you go from substation to the end customers. Okay. So, with this um, by uh, replacing this d i with k d x, we will get this relationship. Now, we have two boundary conditions, one is at x is equal to 0, i x is equal to i s and at x is equal to l, i x is equal to 0. So, if you put these two boundary conditions over here, so, you will get at x is equal to l uh, this i x is equal to 0 that is i s 1 minus k l is equal to 0 which will give the expression for k and if you replace it with uh, you know here. So, you will get the expression of this current that is i x is equal to i s minus uh, i s multiplied by 1 of 1 minus x upon l. Okay. So, this is how we can determine this, but alternatively we can also determine if you plot this characteristic. Simply if we plot this i x versus x, I am talking about magnitude here. Now, this bar symbolize that it is a phasor quantity, but here we are uh, basically if we remove this bar, then whatever the quantity will of the current would be there, that would be the magnitude of that current. Okay. Now, if you plot this i x with respect to x, then as you know at x is equal to 0, i x will be equal to i s magnitude and x is equal to l, it will be 0. So, if it uh, and since this uh, variation of the current or rate of change of current with respect to distance is constant for uniformly distributed load. So, the characteristics will be a nothing but state line characteristics, state line characteristics. Okay. Now, you can assume that this characteristics is equal to y is equal to m x plus c, where c is the intercept, m is the slope and this slope you can see it is a negative slope. So, you can write uh, minus on this. Now, if you put these two boundary conditions at x is equal to 0, i x is equal to you know i s and at x is equal to l i x is equal to 0, then we will get uh, the expression of these two unknown uh, con parameters one is slope another is intercept. So, let us put it. So, at x is equal to 0 i s is equal to uh, i x is equal to i s. So, y is equal to i s this will be minus m x is equal to 0 means multiplied by 0 plus c. So, so constant c is coming out to be i s and at x equal to l this i x is equal to 0. So, this would be 0 left hand side and this will be minus m x 
plus c, c is already determined as i s. So, we will get m as i s by x is of course, at l. So, you have to replace it by l. So, this would be i s by l. So, once you get that if you put it over here. So, you will get i x is equal to y is here nothing but i x. So, i s is equal to uh, minus i x i s by l x plus i s. So, which is nothing but i s 1 minus x by l. So, this we will get alternatively. Okay. Now, uh, now what we will determine because our goal is again to determine this the expressions for this power loss and voltage drop power loss and voltage drop that is why we are doing all this thing. Okay. So, to find out this voltage drop of this infinitely small section let us consider this voltage drop is d v and this power loss is d p l. Okay. L stands for this loss p stands for power. Okay. Now, this d v that is uh, voltage drop at this infinitely small section would be equal to this i x multiplied by this z d x which uh, this z uh, d x is basically representing the impedance of the infinitely small section. So, this is equal to i s my uh, one of the i x is replaced with this expression this expression and z d x will remain. Similarly, this d p l expression we will get i square i x square multiplied by r d x where r is basically per unit length or resistance of the feeder. So, if you multiply it with this uh, length of the infinitely small section that is d x. So, r d x will represent the resistance of the infinitely small section. So, uh, I, if you replace with this expression of i x you will get this. Okay. So, these two are the expressions for uh, this voltage drop and power loss of the infinitely small uh, section d x of d x length which is located x distance away from the substation. Okay. All right. Now, what we will uh, do next we will uh, integrate this from 0 to x. So, that you will get voltage drop up to this section x. So, if you integrate this expression uh, whatever you will get d v from 0 to x with this limit that means, up from here to here then whatever this uh, value of this voltage drop that we will be getting that will be voltage drop up to this point x. Okay. Because this section is infinitely small so up to this point we are getting. So, if you do this integration he here then what we will get you will get this voltage drop will come out to be uh, this is for voltage drop up to x. Now, if you take the full length then this limit will be changed to 0 to l. So, actually this V d will or this full length or full voltage drop of this feeder or the voltage drop of the feeder from the substation to the farthest customer will be integration 0 to l uh, this i s 1 minus x by 2 l z d x. Okay. Now, if you do this uh, integration the you will get this value as. So, this is there is a typo over here this should be d x this should be d x. So, you will get this expression as half of i s z l. Okay. You can uh, verify it. Uh, you will get. Okay. So, this is the basically the expression of voltage drop of whole feeder starting from the substation to the farthest point of the feeder. Similarly, this total power loss of the feeder would be uh, if you integrate the whole uh, you know expression for uh, power loss with the whole range starting from 0 to L. So, you will get this the expression of total power loss as one third of i square r into L. Okay. Now, look at these two expressions, look at these two expression, why this factor half or why this factor one third these are coming, 
why this factor this half and why this factor one third they are coming in the expression of voltage drop and power loss because of the uniform distributed nature of the load. Now, if we have a lumped load uh, that means, we have a here we have substation and we have a feeder uh, like this and at the end all loads are concentrated. This is my load. So, this form of the load is called lumped representation. We do not have any load uh, load points at uh, in between this substation and this farthest point. Now, what could have been this voltage drop? You can try in that case voltage drop would have been I s multiplied by J del because the current which is flowing through this line starting from the substation is I s and current at this point that will be also I s. So, here for this uh, lumped load for lumped load uh, this I x is equal to I s at x is equal to 0. Similarly, I x is equal to I s at x is equal to L. Okay. Now, if this length is of length of the feeder is L and the impedance is small z per unit length. So, to total impedance will be z multiplied by L. Okay. So, so total voltage drop will be nothing but this I s z L. So, there is no half factor there. Now, this half factor is coming because of this uniformly distributed load as if that effective uh, length of the feeder for a uniformly distributed uh, uniformly distributed load of a typical or rather a feeder with uniformly distributed load, the effective length of the feeder is become half in, in order to compute this voltage drop. That means, also this is an advantage yes, because if you compare this voltage drop of a lump feeder or lump load, then it will come as I s multiplied by J del. If you compare this with this, then you, this is 50 percent of the voltage drop as compared to this lump load. Okay. So, if we have a uniformly distributed feeder or this, uh, a feeder with uniformly distributed load, an effective voltage drop becomes half as compared to the voltage drop of a lump feeder. Same is applicable when we will have this power loss uh, calculation. Here this uh, you know uh, actual power loss will be one third of this uh, power loss of a lumped feeder. Okay. So, this is alternatively uh, represented like this for a uniformly distributed feeder the voltage drop will be similar to the lump load connected at the mid point of the feeder. Okay. Now, for a uniformly distributed feeder, the power loss will be similar to the lump load connected at the one third length of the feeder. Okay. So, that is something that is somewhat new uh, for this type of analysis. Okay. Now, I will also talk about power, uh, power loss and the voltage drop expressions for a uniformly uh, distributed load, it is not non uniformly distributed load, but for a uniformly distributed load, but having this service uh, area of triangular. Okay. So, here the service area service area of the feeder is triangular. and load basically are uniformly distributed, but since it is triangular then throughout the line this load becomes non uniformly distributed, because near to the substation less loads are connected. If you go away from the substation more loads are connected. Okay. All right. So, for that case we also need to determine what would be the expressions for power loss and what would be the expression for voltage drop. Okay. Now, again this we can also determine if you plot these characteristics how this uh, current or the load current will vary from the substation to the farthest point. So, here also we have two uh, you know boundary conditions that at x is equal to 0, i x is equal to i s, x is equal to l, 
i x is equal to i x is equal to 0. So, these two are boundary conditions see as similar to the uh, previous example, but here the service area is triangular that is the only difference of that uh, with respect to the previous example. Okay. Now, in order to find out uh, this expression for i x here, we, if we know the characteristics of this i s with respect to x, then uh, if you simply put this uh, two boundary conditions, you will get the exact expression of this i x. Okay. Now, how to find that? We know here this uh, uh, the rate of change of you know current with respect to this distance will be some constant multiplied by this x. Okay. With this you can find out that with the value of this constant like this the way it is done and then as you know uh, if you integrate this current from substation to this point that x then whatever expression that we will get that will be the expression of this current. But I can show you an alternative way to find out this expression. Okay. So, if you plot in fact this plot is I hope it is there somewhere no uh, this uh, if you plot this current with respect to this distance I x is basically current and x is the distance then uh, as I know this uh, bound two boundary condition at x is equal to 0 x is equal to 0 this current will be I s and at x is equal to L this current would be 0. So, these two boundary conditions we know. Now, previously because it was a uniformly distributed loaded feeder, so the current was linearly varying. Now, here how it will vary? Here it will vary like a parabola okay. and therefore, I can represent this I x with the expression of uh, C 1 plus C 2 x square. Okay. Now, since this slope of uh, this is basically negative, so I can re replace it by 0, uh, I can replace it the negative slope. Now, if we put these two boundary condition at x is equal to 0, i x is equal to i s, so I can replace it. So, C 1 will be equal to I s okay. and at x is equal to L I x will be equal to 0. So, this would be 0. So, this would be C 1 minus C 2 L square. So, C 2 will be equal to C 1 by L square. C 1 itself is I s. So, this is basically I s by L square. So, once you get this uh, C 2 and this C 1 you put it here. So, you will get the expression of I x as C 1 is I s minus I s by L square x square. So, this is nothing but I s 1 minus x square by L square. So, this is the expression of I x. So, the same expression you can get alternatively if you plot the expression and plot this uh, current I x with respect to x. Okay. So, once you get this expression of this current I x with respect to x, then your uh, in similar way we determine this uh, voltage drop at the point which is uh, you know the x length distant away from the substation and let us take an infinitely small elementary length of d x, find out the voltage drop of that particular length by uh, similar uh, way we got earlier and also find out the power loss of the infinitely small section. So, once you get that, so if you uh, uh, integrate over 0 to x, you will get the expression for voltage drop up to this point. Now, if you change this limit from 0 to L, then you will get the voltage drop of the entire section. So, this will come out to be 2 third of I s z L two third of I s z L okay. and similarly power loss will come out to be 8 upon 15 I square R L. Okay. And that means, for a triangular service area of a uniformly distributed feeder for a uniformly 
distributed feeder feeder with triangular service area area you can assume that low total load current concentrated at two third distance of the length in, in order to find out this voltage drop and in order to find out this uh, power loss you can assume that load current is concentrated at 8 upon 15 uh, multiplied by the whole length of the feeder. Okay. So, or alternatively you can consider that the effective length of the feeder of a uniformly distributed feeder with triangular service area in order to find out this voltage drop becomes two third of the actual length. Okay. Previously for uniformly distributed uh, feeder with triangular service area we got half of the this effective length we got as half of the actual length in order to calculate the voltage drop, but here we got it as two third of the actual length uh, in order to find out the voltage drop. And for in order to find out the power loss, this factor is found out to be 8 by 15. So, what you can find out if you compare? So, 2 by 3rd is nothing but around 0 0.0667 of this length, uh, this x. So, this would be the actual uh, you know effective length of the feeder, and uh, for uniformly distributed load having a rectangular service area, we found out is. 0.5 of the L. Okay. So, you can see that because of this triangular service area, this effective length is somewhat increased, effective length is somewhat increased, which means that voltage drop will also increase. If you compare with uniformly distributed load with a triangle rectangular service area and triangular service area, because of that uh, particular shape of the service area, your effective length is increased and thereby this voltage drop will also increase. Okay. So, similarly, similar type of uh, you know observation you will be getting in case of power loss. Okay. So, here in this particular lecture I focused on the analytical approach to find out two important you know limiting factors, the expression of two important limiting factors for a typical two cases, case one is feeder with a triangular service area with uniformly distributed load, another is feeder with a rectangular service area with uniformly distributed load. And you can we can understand that how this voltage drop and power loss expressions are different than uh, a typical lumped load which is concentrated at end point of the feeder. Okay. Thank you.